Hey, what's happening? This is a video on my top five favorite plants that I recommend for beginners. Keep watching. How's it going? My name is Gerard. I'm an exotic plant collector. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the top five easiest plants for beginners, in my opinion. This is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, folks? My name is Gerard. I'm an exotic plant collector. And in this video, I wanna be talking about five plants that if you're just beginning and just starting off with plant care, um, five plants that you that I recommend for you. You know what I mean? Um, these are plants that I, well, when I say top five beginners, like I said, it's my opinion. So usually people that don't have plants don't have uh, an idea what they're looking at because they just never had plants. Okay, so I'm freestyling this because I like, I, I know some people rehearse this and write a script, but I just wrote a subject. And if somebody came to me and asked me, like, what would be the number one plant for me if I'm just starting off, just off the rip? No plants at all, no, no knowledge. I just know I have to water the plant, I have to put it in dirt, and I have to give it some sun. So those primarily are what people have. That's like common sense stuff. So I can't with those issues and with those three things that the plant's going to need based on my experience and what I know, I would ask, I would have a few questions for the person that is asking me what would be an easy care plant. Now, I'm going to set a bar, a, a criteria level that I'm going to assume that you have a east facing window or south facing window or a southeast facing window, hopefully not a north facing window. So this is not for north, north facing people. This is people with at least like 200 foot candles. So we have to be specific because, uh, this is, you know, we got lives at stake. We got to take care of these plants. We got to make sure they don't die because they're special creatures. So we got to make sure they don't die. So I'm going to just ask you your first thing. My first thing would be like what type of lighting you're going to give it. Um, cause that narrows down. That makes, that makes, that makes, that makes sense. So I'm just going to just make, I'm just going to base this off of people that have good lighting, natural lighting. Um, you can get a grow light, which I recommend because I have some and also have great lighting. So this is primarily, primarily for the people that are just starting out that don't have a grow light, just starting off once again, but they have a house, they have a window, uh, and they're getting at least four, I would say five to four hours of sun. Now this is another criteria, at least five to four hours of sun. Now, if they, they come to me like, I don't know, and they ask me, you know, I don't know what type of sun I'm going to get. I want to have to tell them to go home and do some research and to find out how much sun you are going to give this particular plant that you are thinking about or maybe thinking about or asking me about. So I would say go home and calculate how much sun you're going to get in the specific area you want to put it because you just can't put the plant anywhere you have to recreate wherever it's from so if you live in a really dark house you can't get a lot of plants because plants don't live in caves the only thing that lives in caves are bats and um, blind fish and i don't know but our houses are can be referred to by caves by like Daryl Chang's house plant journal and I suggest you go get his book um, great guy but I'm using his term as a cave to give you a better idea I think it was the best analogy that he came up with is caves so if you live in a cave you can't grow much in a cave so that's common sense stuff so like I said if you 
came to me and asked me a few questions about an easy care plant, I would go tell you to do some research on how much lighting you're going to give this particular plant and how or how much lighting you're offered. So if you're in and if you're getting like between five to three hours of sun, we may be good. And if you wanna and then some people may not want to put it directly in a window where it would get like the optimal amount of sun and they want to kind of back it away from a window. I would suggest you get a light meter because a light meter would tell you where you should be or where your plant should be. Now, generally, I would say give your plant at least 200 foot candles. Now we're being specific and we're being science because this is a science. We need we need to keep science on our side. So we need to know how many foot candles you're going to give that plant. And then after you come up with that equation or that research or that data, then we can talk a little bit more further about what type of plant would be easy for you. So the next thing that I probably would ask you is, uh, do you have any pets? Because pets do tend to eat on some plants. The only pets that I have are fish. Um, so I'm not going to have to worry about them. But if you have a cat, some plants are deadly to cats. And some plants are deadly to dogs as well. So that would be my third question and we're still going to hit you know the top five because we haven't get this i'm just outlining a few things just to make you aware because i'm not just going to tell you these are easy care plants and you you get it in a you have a house with no lighting and then you know i tell you it's easy and it dies because you don't have a house with lighting but i just want to tell you the criteria what you need to where you need to be at to to continue to this video so you can get an easy care plant that I recommend. So that would be my second question would be, do you have a pet? If you don't have a pet, good. If you do have a pet, that would uh, that would uh, kind of narrow the options. But I'm going to put this video, um, these recommendations, these five recommendations for people with pets. I don't have a pet. And most people have pets. I mean, I have do have a pet, so most people have pets. But we're going to make this a kind of a a mid range area where you know if people have cats, just to be on the safe side, just to be careful. So we're still moving along on the questions. Then my third question would be, how much time are you going to give this plant because it's alive? Um, it needs things. It needs to. You need you to create a jungle or a similar environment for which it came. You know, similar to a nursery. Because if you go to a, like a nursery, it's in a great environment. They're giving it a ton of sun, ton of TLC. You know, they're making sure the humidity and the water is correct. That's why they look so great. So if you get a plant that you don't have a lot of time for that looks great in a nursery or from wherever else you're going to get it and it's giving the given the optimal conditions you might see that plant decline and then that might hurt your spirit and then cause a rift between you and your plant so like I said how much time are you going to give the plant just to give you the most success with the plant so if you have a lot of time let's just narrow this down to people that have an eight hour day and i'm going to just say people without kids matter of fact we'll combine people with kids and then without kids because kids take up a lot of time so that's going to subtract the time for the people that have eight hour jobs and that uh have kids and I, we'll, we'll, we'll still combine it because i think we can still come up with five plants that will be good for you for a beginner um so we're talking first we said the lighting then we said the uh pet situation then we said the uh time situation and um other than that i think that's 
primarily what I would ask you if you were asking me for five easy care plans. Because I just wouldn't give you a plan and tell you, you know, take it and, you know, and watch it. Hopefully we're keeping it alive. So next, I would say, um, if you have enough time for the plant, like you have at least three times a week to tend a plant, like maybe four, I would say, if you got one plant, you probably doesn't need more, more than five minutes of your time, like dusting it, making sure it doesn't, you know, show any signs of any illnesses or any diseases or any pest inf infestations. Um, just give the plant at least a couple times, you know, it's just one plant. I have like multiple plants and I ask myself, how do I have the time? It's like a gift, I would say. The most people that have at least five plants, you know the way of the plant, and then it just becomes like easier and easier. So really taking care of a plant, you just got to give it some things. And people that have multiple plants are able to provide things for a plant. Just like if you have a dog, you should provide certain things for your dog. If you have a cat, you provide certain things for your cat. If you got a nice koi fish, you provide nice koi TLC to make your koi look great and cause you all types of peace and all types of, you know, butterflies inside just to relax you on from you know things in general but i digress so um needs time uh next um after all that was said we're going to get into what i would suggest to you if you met all those criteria of being able to provide a environment that is suitable for your plant your five easy plants so these are five easy plants because like i said i think time would be most critical but they're all the same but i like plants that don't need a lot of time um, there's a lot of plants that need a lot more time than other plants and primarily i'm going to just throw you into the world of the philodendrons because that's what works for me and they give me I think they're very popular I know Hoyas are great um, they look very great um, just the monsters of the, the, the game the plant, the, the, the monsteras the philodendrons, they work for me. Now I did now just come free because we're freestyling this, you're also going to have to give the plant some space um which is also important, but we'll just add that in there. But um, I'm just going to throw you and say, if you can give your plant that much space, I'm going to really just say, I'm going to just say it. The Monstera Deliciosa, the one that I have behind me, will be a number one easy care plant. It's tough. It's rugged. I can like, I can shake it. You know, it doesn't get scared. It's just big and nice and it grew very fast. So this is uh, not number one. So with all those criteria said, um, yes, the Monstera doesn't need a lot of time. The leaves are big. They're not delicate. So you can dust the plant very easily and it gives you that luster, that sheen that you want if you put neem oil on it. And it'll just, and it, it's a great beginner plant for people because also you don't have to water it as much as other plants. Now, watching my videos and just to make sure that you are also understanding of how to water it. Now, well, these, the Monstera, I can say, I don't water it. I don't even really think about it. I just like water it whenever I'm like, I'm, I think it needs some water and it still looks great for me. Um, so that way that might pass three weeks that might even jump into four. But then again, I just won't stretch it that much. And I'll just make sure I just check, dig down in the soil and just make sure that the soil is not wet. So number one, the Monstera Deliciosa, 
that is so popular right now and it's just that great plant and then i'm going to still keep you in the world of the the philodendrons uh, i want to say the tetrasperma rapidisephora which is also a philodendron whether you get a tissue culture or non-tissue culture it's still going to be like an easy care plant given that you have the perfect environment for the plant okay next on the list is like an easy really easy care plant it's not a philodendron but it's a eparimum and i would call the golden pothos one of the five that would be very easy for you to take care of still given that you have the given requirements that I spoke about earlier. Still needs light, even though it will thrive in, very, I would say, less than 200 foot candles. But you just really, just so your plant can look nice and decent and lush, you want to give it as much light as possible. So the golden pothos would be a very infrequent watering plant. I would say it would get a little crazy, well, tedious because the more light that you give it the more foliage it's going to have so you're going to have to dust those leaves a little bit more but you can always cut the plant back like a haircut and it will keep continue to grow just like all these other plants will grow the pothos will probably grow the fastest given like good decent conditions number three and like i said just coming off at the top of my head a very easy plant would be a sayori snake or a sayori sansevieria it's different it's still a sansevieria it's like a snake plant they do need light now you some people say they would, could thrive in a dark corner but why would you want it in a dark corner because it's just not going to grow and look as great for you as if you gave it the recommendations that I spoke about earlier once again. So I'm going to stop saying that because you get the picture. But Sayori snake or any type of san sansevieria, if you give it good light, you don't have to water it as much. So that will also leave it in that category as a not a needy plant. You don't have to water it a lot. You let it give it sun. You don't have to dust it because the blades of the plants are uh, pretty wide and thick. So you can dust it every so often and give it that nice sheen. Once again, you need to dust the plants. It's not a real finicky light requirement type of plant. So you may hear it on a lot of channels saying like you could put it in a dark corner and thrive. But like I said, you just don't want to do that. So we said, we talked about the Monstera, the Tetrasperma, the Golden Pothos, the Sansev Sayori San Sansevieria, and like number five, just rambling off the top of my head, if you want like a nice looking different plant, I would say get a Raven ZZ plant, because it's different from your green type of plants it's black or has a like a really dark lush hue to it which is very dark look almost looks black they call it a raven because it looks like a raven this plant also does not lead a lot of watering it has like these storage containers under the soil where it holds a good amount of water for it to lot to live throughout the you know a couple of days or a couple of weeks without watering so you don't have to water it that much. You got to give it some light so it can thrive and look great for you. And I would say just, it's like, it's one of those plants that have a lot of leaves. So I do notice that I do have to dust those leaves of the, the uh, ZZ plant because it attracts dust like all your plants. So you're going to have to dust that plant off. So it has a couple of different leaves. So like I said, it's number five. It's last on the list because of the maintenance. You got to dust the leaves. And sometimes I just put it in the shower and just have the water just 
spray all the dust off of it instead of going like using my hands dusting off the plant so that's my only reason like it's right on that that barrier of a, a, a kind of intermediate plant to a beginner because of the dusting factor but everything else is cool with the plants and like I said you gotta give your plants everything that it needs I also like to prefer to give my plants air circulation so I run the ceiling fans I run fans going through and you'll see that with the other plant influencers they have fans going on in their greenhouses or in their houses that helps the plants thrive as well so that's pretty much it top five favorite plants monstera at monstera deliciosa the tetrasperma i'll just call it tetrasperma tc or non-tc tetrasperma tissue culture or non-tissue culture tissue culture meaning it's made off from a tissue in the lab and they made a different variation in non-tissue culture is that you're getting the actual original plant from the wild that hasn't been treated or manipulated in a lab in a lab the golden pothos which is like the number one plant that you'll see most in every garden center every nursery just widely known <clears throat> but the other plants that i'm talking about the raven and the sayuri you might not see that as much but guarantee you it's an easy plant for you to take care of as long as you can fit those criteria with the lighting the time that it needs the maintenance the dusting and the watering the periodic watering that you'll monitor throughout the life of your you know the weeks the weeks of your plant it doesn't need a lot of time but just a little bit of the time wherever you want to put it at in a nice place in your house on a countertop on a windowsill or on a table something just just giving your 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 living space some life for you to live better and you to make sure that your plant lives its blessed life is awesome so i'm going to end it at that thank you for watching this is gerard toward the culture culture don't forget to hit me on instagram if you want to connect with me and if you haven't don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like what you're hearing if you want to see more of me i have tons of other videos so check me out on instagram and also don't forget to hit that notification bell to check out my latest videos keep growing